In MathCAD, you can create polar plots. A polar plot graphs a function showing the radius r as a function of the angle theta. Here I am on my worksheet. Let's go to the Plots tab. And then when you click on the Insert Plot drop-down list, the second choice is Polar Plot. If you hover your mouse over the command, you can see that the keyboard shortcut is Control-4. Let me click on the command. And we have our polar plot started. You can see that it goes from zero degrees around to 360 degrees. Be aware though that your function is going to be in radians. And it goes from zero in the center to one at the right side. In other words, it goes from a radial value of negative one to one by default. Here we have the radial axis. To start with, I'm going to graph the same values on the radial axis and on the angular axis. And so I'm gonna start off with the variable theta. Let me go to the math tab. And by the way, this is a new worksheet, so theta is currently undefined. If I go to the symbols dropdown list, let me use this theta, which is the keyboard shortcut of Q followed by Control G. Control G will convert a regular letter into its Greek equivalent. So let me choose theta from here, and then I'll click in the other placeholder for the angular axis. This time I will use the keyboard shortcut Q and then hit Control G, and that converts it to theta. Then I'll click outside of the plot, and here you can see how we are getting what's called the Archimedes spiral. So it graphs the points moving away from a center point at a constant speed and a constant angular velocity. And we have our polar plot. I can grab it and I can drag it and make it a little bit wider. I'm going to grab it and then move it down because I'm going to throw in some other additional variables up here. I'm going to start defining some different range variables. Let's define range 1. And that's going to be equal to 0. Then I'll use the comma. And that way I'll be able to specify the increment for my range variable. I will use an increment of 0.01. And then I'll use the arrow key on the keyboard to go to the other place holder. I want to put 2 pi here, so I'll type in 2. And then you can go to the symbols drop-down list. And pi is right here. That is the keyboard shortcut P followed by the letters Control-G or the keystrokes Control-G. So I will choose that. Let's define a couple more. Let's do range. And I'll call this range Two, and this will go from 0 with an increment of 0 0.01 to 4 pi. In other words, two complete revolutions. Let me use P, Control G, and I will do one more. Let's define range 3 as going from 0 with an increment of 0, 1 to 8 times pi, P, Control G. And deselect. It's going a little off my sheet. Let me grab it and move it over. Now I'm going to find my theta value. Let me grab this and move it down so I've got a little bit more space on here. So for theta, that was Q, control G. This is going to be equal to initially, let's change it from going from 0 to 2 pi, which is one revolution, to 4 pi. So I'll change theta to be equal to range 2. And I'll deselect, and you can see how now we are getting two full loops of the Archimedes spiral. Let me change this to my third range variable. And you can see how it's going out. And you can also see over here how our numbers on the radial axis are increasing automatically. We can manually change those. So, for example, I can click on the end and change that to a maximum value of, say, 30 over here. And you can also click on the very first value if you want to change the increment between your different uh, marks that you have on the radial axis. Okay, so that is good for my first polar plot. Let's take a look at another couple of examples. And before I do that, I'm going to change my range variable just to go from 0 to 2 pi. Let's change it back to the first range variable. I only need one complete loop for the other ones that I'm going to do. Okay, for the next polar plot, we're going to take a look at 
doing a rose curve. In other words, it is a curve that looks like the petals of a flower. So let me click on the sheet, then I'll go to plots, insert plot, polar plot, and then we have our radial axis. And I'm going to use a function for a rose curve. Let's do sine and then parentheses, and I'll do three times theta. So once again, that is Q, control G. And then in my angular placeholder, let's put in theta, which is Q, control G, and then click outside. And there you can see our first rows curve. Let's add in some more rows curves. So I can click over in the radial axis and then add another trace. And for this other trace, let's do sine of six times theta. And once again, I'll use the keyboard shortcuts, Q, control G, and then click outside of it. And now we're getting many more loops around here. Just to make this a little easier to distinguish, let me select my second trace that I have in here. Then I can go to the trace color Let's make it red just to contrast it so you can see the blue versus the red. Also, another thing that will help me over here is to change the extent. Let's change this to a value of 2 and click outside. And let's also change the interval, change the interval to a value of 1. All right, let's add in another trace to see a different rose curve. And so I will click on here. Let's go to add trace. And this time for my rose curve, I'm going to do two times cosine. This time I'm using cosine instead of the sine curve. And let's use four times theta, Q, control G, and then click outside. And the two traces are the same color. Let's select the third trace and go to trace color. And rather than using one of the default colors, I can go to more colors. I want a nice greenish color. I'm happy with that, so I'll click the OK button. And so there you can see our third rose curve located over here. Once again, I might want to change my extents. And let's change the interval. Change over here. Let's change this to 0.5. There we go. And so there we have our rose curve in the model. Let's do one more set of polar curves. Let me go over here, and I'm going to start off with some text information. Let's add in a text block. And I'll go to text formatting. Let's go to middle justification. And this is something called a, probably mispronouncing this, Lemnis Gates, Lemnis Gottes. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how I'm supposed to pronounce that. And for this one, I'm also going to go to the document tab. Let's see, where is my spell checking? It's somewhere in here. I want to turn that off. Oh, there it is. Uh, just so that I'm not getting that red squiggle underneath this name. And so let's write in the function of our Lemnus Skates curve. Someone out there is probably just groaning, oh, Dave, this is how it's pronounced. But anyhow, let's define one. I'll call it L1 as a function of alpha, A, control G. I'm going to have this equal to, and to make it equal to a function, you can go to the math tab. And then from operators, we have our definition operator. And let's just do a square root. I can go to the operators dropdown. Here's square root. The keyboard shortcut is the backslash. This is going to be equal to the square root of the cosine of 2 alpha. So I'll type in the letter A, control G. And that is the first function that we are going to graph. Let me scroll down here and let me put in my polar plot. I'll go to the plots tab, insert plot, polar plot, and on the Radial axis, let's do L1. Once again, I'll use my theta, my range variable that I set up earlier. L1 of theta, which is Q, control G. And then for the angular axis, let's put in theta, which is Q, control G, and then click outside. 
And so a Lemnus Skates or Lemnus Scotties is a figure eight, also looks like the infinity symbol. And the way that this is defined is that it is the product of distances from two fixed points, which are plus or minus some value from the origin. Well, the product of the distances up from the two fixed points in sort of like the middle of the lobes is the square of the coordinate of the fixed points. So you can look it up if you want some more information on how it is defined. Let's try a couple other different variations of this. So let me click up here and define a second function. Actually, it'll just be easier if I take this and then right click on it. Let's copy and then paste it. And that way I can just type in here. Let's change this to my second L function is going to be this times, let's multiply this entire function times four, four times the cosine of two theta. So, oops, actually accidentally hit shift four. Let's do regular four. Let's do four times that. And then let me click over here and I will add another trace and this will be L2 of theta Q control G and then click outside. We have our second trace. Let's once again, make these different in color. Let's use a red color for the second one. And so you'll see by adding in a coefficient, the curve ends up being wider. And let's create one more of these. Let me grab this function and I will right click copy and then click on the sheet, right click paste. And let's make our third function this is going to be equal to the negative of the function. And then I will click over here. Let's add in our trace and let's do L3 of theta Q control G and then click outside. And you'll notice, hey, this one is rotated. Once again, let's select the trace, go to the trace color, more colors. And let's add in a green color once again, click the OK button. We can even change the trace thickness just to make it stand out from the other different curves. So there you have it, three different polar plots, one for the Archimedes spiral, one for the rose curve, and one for this word. You can try all this on your own. If you don't have MathCAD, you can download MathCAD Express from www.mathcad.com.